Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I have some initial housekeeping that I would like to cover. First off, it seems that I have some Twitter imposters who are now promoting ETH giveaways. So please don't send any accounts posing as me any crypto. I'm not doing a giveaway and I will not be doing one in the future. I have been reporting all of these accounts that I see to Twitter, but that doesn't really do so much. So please use your best judgment in this scenario or come into my Discord and ask if you're really convinced it's me so that I can tell you that it's not. First, I'd like to start with my normal disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. All investments have inherent risk. Also, I'd like to mention if I'm holding any of the coin before I start the video and I'm not holding any Zillica. A final point to mention before getting started, please subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and if you enjoy my content. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon account and becoming one of my patrons. I post all my videos as podcasts over there for people. Um, also, if you want to chat or ask me questions, feel free to join my Discord server. The link will be down below and we're always in there chatting with people. Let's get started. Zillica is an open source project that was developed to scale, allowing thousands of transactions per second. And it is focused on secure data flow smart contracts that will utilize their high throughput. What we've seen over the last year in crypto is that scaling and network demand has become a serious issue for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And when that demand increases, so do the transaction fees, and that has made the usability of the blockchains more difficult. I'm going to be using the word throughput a lot in this video. I wanted to quickly define it. Network throughput is the amount of data that is moved successfully from one place to another in a given time period. I'm defining this for you guys because I had to define it for myself, so I figured it was a good point to mention. Let's move on to the project history. So the advisors of the Zillica team wrote the first academic paper on sharding as a scalability solution for public blockchains in 2015. Subsequently, the idea was implemented in a private blockchain setting in and around 2017, which is when Zillica was created as a spin-off project using the same underlying technology. However, they were utilizing this technology in a public setting. In their FAQ, they explain the name Zillica, and it's a play on the word silica. They reference the fact that silica powers the computing industry, and so the team hopes that Zillica will power the next generation of applications. Zillica's team consists of some pretty highly educated scientists, entrepreneurs, and engineers with experience in the blockchain domain. I apologize ahead of time if I butcher the names here. Their CEO is Zinsu Dong, who has a PhD in computer science from the National University of Singapore. He has led several national cybersecurity projects in Singapore, and he's had his research published in different international conferences. Parikh Saxena is the chief scientific advisor and has a PhD in computer science from Berkeley. He's a research professor in computer science at the National University of Singapore and was one of the co-authors of the first academic paper on sharding in a public blockchain, which inspired the Zillica project. They have a few different advisors, but the one that stuck out to me is Lo Lu, who's the co-founder of the Kyber Network. Next up is the ICO. So Zillica conducted a presale in November of 2017 and planned to raise 20 million in total. But due to the significant increase in the price of Ethereum against the US dollar, they ended up increasing the hard cap to 22 million because they hit their goal before the crowd sale and they wanted to give the Zillica community members a chance to still be a part of the crowd sale. The ICO crowd sale started on December 27th of 2017 and ended January 4th of 2018. Zill is an ERC-20 token, which means it works on the Ethereum blockchain. Eventually, it will be moving to its own blockchain. The ICO did have KYC requirements, and Japan, the US, and China were not permitted to participate. 30% of the total supply was distributed during the ICO. And in total, they ended up raising something like 48,000 ETH. The total eventual circulating supply will be 21 billion tokens. 60% went to the private and public sale, as well as the team and the advisors. And the remaining 40% will be released in the mining rewards over the next 10 years. The allocation of the tokens from the crowd sale are as follows. 40% of the token rewards are to miners, over the next 10 years to incentivize the miners on the network. 30% of tokens to the supporters in the contribution phases. 30% to the developer team, advisors, and community outreach. 
Of that 30% that I just mentioned, 10% will go to Anquan, which will continue to support the Zillica project. 12% goes to Zillica Research, a new entity that is leading the research, development, community engagement, bounty programs, and marketing for Zillica. 5% goes to the founding Zillica team. 3% goes to various agencies and advisors. These tokens are mostly vested for three years, so they're not part of the circulating supply yet. On to the technology. The ZIL circulating supply sits at 7.2 billion, and the tokens are referred to as Zillings or ZILs for short. The usage of ZILs will give token holders the ability to pay for sending transactions and running smart contracts, similar to how Ethereum uses Ether as gas. It is estimated that it will have a block time of two minutes and that it will process thousands of transactions per second. In the recent public test net, they reached a peak throughput of 2,000 transactions per second with 1,000 nodes. The interesting thing about Zillica is that the throughput increases almost literally as the size of the network increases. Basically, that means the more transactions, the faster the network is. Zillica uses an optimized practical Byzantine fault tolerance, PBFT for short, as the protocol for consensus. I sort of understand what that is, but I don't want to go too much detail onto it because it's going to end up taking the whole video. That's one of the consensus protocols that I definitely understand the least and I should probably put more time into, but it's certainly very confusing. The biggest selling point is that Zillica is the first blockchain that's designed to implement sharding for improved scaling as a blockchain grows in size. Let me first explain what network sharding is, because I had no idea prior to researching this video, and it took a little bit of time for me to fully understand it. Basically, Zillica splits the network of blockchain nodes into different subgroups, called shards. And each of these shards processes and reaches consensus on a subset of transactions. This means that independent subsets of transactions can be processed in unison and greatly increase the transaction throughput. Zillica uses a proof of work consensus to choose and continually update what is referred to as the Directory Service Committee or the DS Committee. This is used to carry out identity validation processing for nodes entering the network. The DS Committee coordinates the sharding process and validates blocks of transactions proposed by shards, and then they are committed to the blockchain. Zillica uses proof of work, but only to prevent what's called Sybil attacks, which is a type of network attack based on the attacker forging their identity. I'm going to quote an article that I found that seriously explains how Zillica blockchain works better than I could have tried to describe it myself. So a user initiates a transaction, which is then sent to a shard. The shard validates the transaction, grouping it with other transactions to form a microblock of transactions. And a consensus is reached by the shard on the validity of the microblock. This microblock is then sent to the DS committee, which combines the microblocks into what are called final blocks. And then we'll run a final consensus on this block before adding it to the blockchain. This is why I said I wanted to use that example to explain it better than I could, because that was pretty much the only thing that would summarize it for me that made any sense at all. In October of 2017, running with 3,600 nodes and six shards, Zillica had already recorded a peak throughput of 2,488 transactions on the internal testnet. This is about 250 times higher than the current throughput of Ethereum, which is probably why the team states that it believes that it has the potential to rival legacy payment methods such as Visa and MasterCard. Like Ethereum, Zillica supports smart contracts, but it does so using a new scripting language built specifically for sharding. This gives the ability to run programs in parallel to make use of the full computational power of the network. Next up is mining incentives. So when a node successfully mines a transaction block, it is rewarded with newly created tokens. The emission curve is expected to be front heavy to incentivize miners to join early. 80% of tokens will be mined in the first four years and the remaining 20% spread over the next six years. Block reward reductions will happen gradually. After 10 years, Zillica aims to have a network functioning at a sufficient scale with a stable and high enough token price to ensure that transaction fees will be able to satisfy the network. At this current time, I was unable to find any resources stating what approximate fees might be for transactions. What I did notice is that it seems the project is currently being led by a foundation called Silica Research. The team states that they are planning on releasing more details on the foundation and the possibility of a governance model sometime in the future. That brings us to present day. Zillica sits at 38 on coin market cap with a market cap value of 743 million. 
Zillica can be purchased on a number of different exchanges, but the larger ones being Binance and Huboi. Currently, because they are on the Ethereum network, they can be stored on any ERC-20 uh, wallet that holds tokens, but they don't have any Zill specific wallets yet, obviously because they're not really running on their main net. Things coming up in the future to look forward to, their public test net version two release is scheduled for Q2 of this year. Their public main net release is scheduled for Q3 of this year. And anchor dApps are scheduled to be released in Q4 of this year. The team has stated that they will be seeking out the implementation of interoperability layers as the direction of their future research. But the present time, their scalability is their main priority, and I would also assume that getting on their main net is probably their main priority too. Next up is pros. So extremely fast transaction speeds, putting the project in a league of its own. While I think it can be compared to a larger platform or other projects like ETH or NEO, I don't necessarily see it as a direct competitor because its use cases can be so different due to the fact that it can support such a heavy transaction load. Contrary to most blockchain networks that get slower as the network size increases, Zilliqa utilizes a linear scaling approach and that allows the network's throughput capacity to increase with each new node that joins the network. And this means that the more miners who join the network, the higher the throughput of the ecosystem. Another pro, their FAQs on their website were extremely informative. And for the most part, they make all the information easy to consume, which I believe is very important for adoption. The Zillica blockchain will store information. However, there's also the possibility for dApp developers to leverage on distributed storage providers like BlueZill or Gennaro for storage options. Next up is cons. So I don't like that the project is overseen by an organization. It's definitely seen as a centralizing factor in my eyes. Um, you know, they do state that they are releasing more info about the foundation soon, and we'll see if my opinion changes then. But generally any project that I've covered that has some sort of central entity kind of controlling it, I just don't really see it as a pro. Um, again, it's kind of hard to avoid that in the beginning, but let's see, I guess, what the future holds and what kind of information they release about the foundation. I'm also not a huge fan uh, about the fact that the founders were allocated funds in the ICO. I much prefer when teams have to purchase the coins if they want to be a part of the initial distribution, just like everybody else. I think it makes it a bit more fair. By stating that they're eventually going to be adding cross-chain interoperability, they're definitely adding a whole slew of new competitors to work around. Again, this is something that they stated will be coming in the future and it's not a current priority, but it is definitely something that should be thought about at a little bit more length. A common complaint that I've seen in my research is that the team's not really spent enough time marketing their project and getting the word out. So because of that, they feel like maybe they're not getting the kind of outreach or coverage that they deserve. My final thoughts. This project is bringing about something that the blockchain really needs, and no other project really out there has implemented anything like this yet. The only problem with this whole concept is that there are dozens of cryptocurrency projects already working on something like this right now and trying to deal with scalability problems that we find in our current blockchain solutions. Especially considering the fact that if you check out their roadmap, their mainnet launch isn't happening until the third quarter of this year. That's a long time in crypto adjusted terms. If the project can successfully overcome the immediate hurdles, I think that the concept and the goals are awesome. I feel that next year is going to be a very serious race to the finish line for all of these projects involved, trying to solve the scalability issue. As a final point, I'd like to mention that it seems as though maybe the community is not that engaged. Um, their Slack and their Telegram have a lot of people, but I was really only able to get a hold of one person who was willing to answer some of my questions. I found that quite disheartening, and I suppose it could be interpreted that they are very busy maybe, um, but in some light you would think that more people would be accessible to speak to. Nonetheless, the person that I did speak to is extremely friendly and very helpful, and I'm grateful that I was able to get a hold of someone. Well, that's about all I got for today, folks, so I want to thank everybody for watching and for the continued support, and I'll see you guys soon.